Vitor Belfort, the Phenom, a name that once struck fear into the hearts of MMA fighters worldwide. With lightning fast hands and knockout power that seemed almost superhuman, Belfort was destined for greatness. But then something changed. From UFC champion to controversial figure, Belfort's career took more twists and turns than one of his infamous spinning kicks. Was it the TRT ban, the constant scrutiny, or something else entirely? Today we are diving deep into the roller coaster career of Vitor Belfort. From his meteoric rise as a teenage prodigy to the controversies that shook the MMA world, we'll uncover what really happened to the man they called the Phenom. Growing up in a tough, often dangerous environment, Belfort's childhood wasn't easy, but it shaped his mindset and toughness. At just 12 years old, Belfort began training in boxing, sharpening the skills that would later become his signature in the cage. Early on, his natural talent was obvious. He had a unique combination of speed and power that set him apart from other kids his age. But Vitor didn't stop with boxing. He went deeper into martial arts by learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Under the tutelage of the legendary Carlson Gracie, Belfort earned his black belt in BJJ by the age of 17, showcasing the work ethic and dedication he had. This early training gave him the unique blend of striking and grappling that would make him one of the most dangerous fighters in the sport. Belfort's teenage years were all about honing his skills and preparing for a future in combat sports. His coaches and teammates noticed his explosiveness right away, and it wasn't long before the young Brazilian realized his potential. While most teens were still figuring out what they wanted to do in life, Belfort had already set his sights on a career in fighting. He wasn't just training for fun, he was preparing for greatness. It was clear from the start that Vitor had a special kind of intensity and focus qualities that would serve him well in the cutthroat world of professional fighting. The groundwork for his future MMA career was being laid, and by his late teens, Vitor was ready to take his talents to the United States. This move was a pivotal moment for him, as it opened up opportunities to train with some of the best coaches and fighters in the world. The transition to the U.S. also marked the beginning of his professional fighting journey, a path that would see him rise to stardom and face some of the biggest challenges of his life. At just 19 years old, Vitor Belfort made his professional debut, and the MMA world took notice. Fighting for small promotions was just the warm-up for what was to come. It was when Vitor was, uh, he fought for his first time. In 1997, Vitor entered the UFC 12 heavyweight tournament. He shocked the world by becoming the youngest fighter to ever win in the UFC at that time, defeating his opponents with blistering speed and savage knockout power. His performance was nothing short of jaw-dropping. He ran through the competition like a wrecking ball, leaving both fans and fighters in awe. By the time he won the tournament, his reputation as the Phenom was cemented, a nickname that stuck with him throughout his career. But Belfour wasn't satisfied with just a single victory. He wanted more, and his path in the UFC saw him go up against some of the toughest and most skilled fighters of his time. His early victories established him as a rising star in the sport. But it was his fight against Vanderlei Silva at UFC Brazil that took his stardom to the next level. In just 44 seconds, Belfort unleashed a barrage of punches that decimated Silva in one of the most famous sequences in MMA history. This was the moment when Belfort became a household name, not just in Brazil, but around the world. People started recognizing him for his explosiveness and precision, and his fights were must-watch events. As Belfort continued to rack up wins, it became clear that he was a unique talent. His fighting style, an aggressive blend of speed, power, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was something the MMA world hadn't seen before. He was equally dangerous on his feet and on the ground, a true multi-dimensional fighter. Vitor quickly became a fan favorite, not just because he had won fights, but because of how he won them, with devastating knockouts and submission skills that left fans hungry for more. The late 90s and early 2000s were a time of both triumph and challenges for Vitor Belfort. After his explosive debut and a series of iconic fights, Vitor earned his first shot at UFC Gold. In 2004, he captured the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship by defeating Randy Couture, one of the most respected fighters in the sport. This was a huge milestone for Belfort as winning the belt solidified his place among the top fighters in the world. 
The fight itself ended in a controversial manner due to a cut that Couture sustained, but a win is a win. Belfort walked away with the title. However, Belfort's career was far from smooth sailing. He faced some of the toughest competition in the world, including legends like Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, and Alistair Overeem. Some of these fights ended in victory, while others exposed gaps in his game. His speed and power were his greatest assets, but they weren't always enough to secure the win. Still, even when he lost, Belfort always came back stronger, showing the heart and determination of a true champion. One of the biggest highlights of Belfort's career was his time fighting in Japan under the Pride Fighting Championship banner. Pride was known for having some of the toughest, most skilled fighters in the world, and Belfort's presence there added to his global reputation. In Japan, Belfort faced international talent, showing that he could compete and win on the world stage. But as with any fighter's career, Belfort's journey wasn't without its bumps in the road. Along with the incredible victories came some significant challenges. Inconsistent performances often left fans and analysts questioning his place in the rankings. While he could destroy opponents with his fists, there were times when his game seemed to fall apart, leading to tough losses that took him out of title contention. And it wasn't just inside the cage where Vitor faced battles. His personal life took a tragic turn when his sister was kidnapped and disappeared in 2004, a heartbreaking event that affected him deeply. The challenges continued with controversies over failed drug tests. Belfort tested positive for banned substances on more than one occasion, sparking debates about his legacy. One of the most talked about controversies of Vitor Belfort's career was one that cast a shadow over his achievements. It's his involvement in the testosterone replacement therapy, TRT era. To fully understand this controversy, we need to look at the broader context of MMA at the time. TRT, which is essentially a medical treatment designed to boost testosterone levels for those who have medically low amounts, was widely used in professional sports in the early 2010s. The treatment was legal in many athletic commissions as long as fighters had a valid medical exemption, known as therapeutic use exemption. But for Vitor Belfort, TRT became much more than just a medical treatment and became a massive talking point that defined a significant part of his later career. For Belfort, TRT was introduced as a way to treat low testosterone levels, something that could have been caused by years of hard training and fighting, or even by previous steroid use earlier in his career, which he had tested positive for in 2006. When Belfort began using TRT, he saw a major resurgence in his performances. He looked more muscular, more explosive, and physically more dangerous than he had in years. This version of Belfort went on to knock out some of the UFC's top middleweights in devastating fashion, including Michael Bisping, Luke Rockhold, and Dan Henderson. These were statement knockouts that put Belfort back in the conversation for title contention and earned him a fearsome reputation as a fighter who could finish anyone at any time. However, his physical transformation and his sudden career resurgence raised red flags within the MMA community. Fans, fighters, and analysts began to question how much of Belfort's success was due to his fighting abilities and how much was due to the TRT treatments he was receiving. Critics argued that TRT was essentially a loophole that allowed older fighters to artificially boost their performance, and that Belfort, who had been flagged for banned substances earlier in his career, was unfairly benefiting from the therapy. His increased muscle mass combined with his enhanced performances in the cage led many to dub him the poster child of the TRT era. In particular, the 2013 head kick knockout of Luke Rockhold remains a defining moment of Belfort's TRT-fueled resurgence. That victory, along with his knockout of Dan Henderson, placed him on a collision course with then UFC middleweight champion Chris Weidman. However, this was also the moment when the TRT controversy reached its boiling point, both for Belfort and for the sport as a whole. The MMA world was paying attention, and soon enough, so were the athletic commissions. By 2014, just before Belfort was scheduled to fight for the middleweight title against Weidman, the Nevada State Athletic Commission officially banned the use of TRT for all fighters. This was a huge shift for the sport as several fighters had been relying on TRT to compete at a high level. But no one felt the impact of this decision more than Belfort. The ban essentially forced him to stop using TRT cold turkey, and the effects on his body were immediate and visible. In the lead-up to his fight with Weidman, Belfort's physical transformation without TRT was stark. He looked notably smaller and less muscular, and his performance in the fight reflected this change. 
Belfour was thoroughly beaten by Weidman, who had dominated him on the ground before finishing him with a TKO in the first round. This fight marked the end of Belfort's resurgence and the beginning of a downturn in his UFC career. Without TRT, the physical edge that had helped Belfort in his late career revival was gone, and his subsequent performances showed the wear and tear of years spent in the cage. For the sport of MMA, the banning of TRT was a crucial moment. While fighters like Dan Henderson and Chael Sonnen had also used TRT, Belfort had become the most associated with the controversy due to his extreme physical changes and the success he enjoyed while on the treatment. The ban signaled a shift toward a cleaner, more regulated sport. It also exposed how some fighters had been benefiting from TRT in ways that many fans and analysts felt gave them an unfair advantage. As a result, the TRT era became one of the most debated periods in MMA history. In the final years of his UFC career, Vitor faced some of the sport's best, including top contenders like Chris Weidman and Dan Henderson. While he did have some success, his age and miles in the cage began to show. The speed and power that had once set him apart were starting to fade, and younger, faster fighters began to expose his weaknesses. In 2018, after a devastating knockout loss to Lyoto Machida, Vitor decided it was time to retire from MMA. It was the end of an era, but not the end of his journey in combat sports. Even after retiring from MMA, Belfour wasn't done fighting. In March 2019, he signed with One Championship, one of Asia's premier MMA promotions. The move excited fans as they hoped to see Belfour compete again. However, his debut was delayed by the COVID-19 pandemic, and after several postponements, Belfour parted ways with the organization without ever having fought. But Vitor wasn't finished yet. Instead, he turned to another passion of his, boxing. Belfort had always been a fan of the sweet science and he had previously competed in one professional boxing match back in 2006, where he scored a knockout victory. Now in the later stages of his combat sports career, Belfort saw an opportunity to return to the ring. And with the rise of crossover boxing events where MMA fighters, YouTubers, and celebrities stepped into the ring, he saw a chance to reignite his fighting career in a new arena. Belfort made headlines in 2021 when he signed with Triller Fight Club a promotion known for its mix of professional boxing bouts and celebrity-driven events. Initially, he was set to fight Mike Holston, a social media personality also known as the Real Tarzan. However, when Holston pulled out of the bout for undisclosed reasons, Belfort faced a last-minute replacement. Although the opponent wasn't a high-profile fighter, Belfort secured a first-round knockout, showing that his hand still had plenty of power even after years away from competitive combat. One of the most talked about moments of Belfort's post-MMA career came when he was scheduled to face boxing legend Oscar De La Hoya in a professional bout on September 11, 2021. The fight had the potential to be huge, as De La Hoya was making a long-awaited comeback to the ring after years of retirement. Fans were eager to see how Belfort, an MMA legend, would fare against De La Hoya, a former multi-division boxing champion. However, just days before the fight, De La Hoya tested positive for COVID-19 and had to pull out. Stepping in as a last-minute replacement was another legend, former heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. At 58 years old and inactive for a decade, Holyfield's decision to take the fight raised serious concerns among fans and pundits. Many questioned the ethics of letting an aging, inactive fighter like Holyfield step into the ring against a still active and much younger Belfort. California State Athletic Commission refused to sanction the fight due to these concerns, forcing the event to be moved to Florida, where the fight was allowed to go on. On fight night, Belfort wasted no time. He overwhelmed Holyfield early in the first round, securing a technical knockout in just under two minutes. The victory, however, was met with heavy criticism. Many felt that the fight was a mismatch and that it exploited Holyfield's age and diminished physical condition. In the aftermath, Belfort defended the fight, expressing his respect for Holyfield and emphasizing that both men had agreed to the bout knowing the risks involved. While Belfort celebrated the win, the backlash surrounding the fight was impossible to ignore, and it raised questions about the safety and ethics of these types of crossover events. Fresh off his victory over Holyfield, Belfort wasted no time making headlines again by calling out one of the most controversial figures in combat sports, Jake Paul. 
Paul, a YouTuber turned boxer, had been making waves in the boxing world by fighting former MMA fighters and building a massive following. Belfour, seeing an opportunity to cash in on the influencer boxing trend, publicly challenged Paul to a $30 million winner-takes-all fight. I mean, it's, it's a bit ridiculous. I think there's better people out there. Like you were saying, like Vitor is not that big of a name. He, he just isn't, you know, and he's not even as big of a name as Tyron. I'm trying to get bigger with each one of these fights. I'm trying to have more like ch of a challenge. I think Vitor is a lot easier of a fight than Tyron. He's older. The challenge sparked plenty of debate within the MMA and boxing communities. Many saw it as a legitimate opportunity for Belfort to shut down Paul and reclaim some of the spotlight for seasoned professional fighters. Others, however, viewed it as part of the growing trend to spectacle fights that blurred the line between real competition and entertainment. While no official fight with Jake Paul materialized, Belfort remained vocal about wanting to fight high-profile opponents. There were even discussions about potential matchups with other MMA legends like Anderson Silva, who had also transitioned into boxing or rematches with old rivals from his MMA days. It was clear that Belfort wasn't done chasing big money fights, and his participation in crossover events kept his name in the conversation. In late 2022, it looked like Belfort was gearing up for another significant boxing match, when it was announced that he would fight Haseem Rahman Jr., the son of former heavyweight champion Haseem Rahman. The fight was set to take place as part of the Misfits Boxing Series a promotional series blending traditional boxing with crossover fights featuring influencers and celebrities. Belfort's fight with Rahman Jr. was seen as a step up in competition compared to his previous boxing outings. However, just before the fight, Belfort tested positive for COVID-19, forcing him to withdraw from the event. Former NFL player and MMA fighter Greg Hardy stepped in as the replacement to fight Rahman Jr. Vitor Belfort's love for combat sports has always gone beyond just MMA and boxing. Even after years of competing at the highest levels, Belfort has shown an interest in exploring other forms of combat sports. One of the areas he has expressed interest in is bare-knuckle boxing. The rise of promotions like Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship has caught Belfort's attention, and he has mentioned that the raw, brutal nature of the bare-knuckle fighting intrigues him. He sees it as a throwback to the very early days of combat sports where there were fewer rules and the fights were more about survival. In addition to bare knuckle boxing, Belfort has also explored the idea of competing in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and submission grappling tournaments. Returning to his roots in BJJ, Belfort has toyed with the idea of competing in grappling events as a way to continue his martial arts journey without the risk of striking based combat. These options keep him connected to his original martial arts training and they allow him to pass on his knowledge to the next generation of fighters. Speaking of the next generation, Vitor Belfort has become increasingly involved in mentorship and coaching. After spending decades at the highest levels of combat sports, Belfort has a wealth of knowledge to share, and he has been actively coaching up-and-coming fighters. His experience in both MMA and boxing gives him a unique perspective on what it takes to succeed in the modern fight game. Belfort frequently holds seminars and workshops, where he teaches the techniques and philosophies that guided him throughout his career. He is particularly passionate about helping young fighters develop the mental toughness needed to compete at the top levels. For Belfort, fighting isn't just about physical skills. It's about the mindset, discipline, and perseverance required to overcome challenges both in and out of the ring. While fighting has always been Belfort's main passion, he has also built a successful career outside of the cage with various business ventures. One of his primary focuses is on fitness and wellness. He launched Belfort Fitness Lifestyle, a fitness program designed to help people achieve their health and wellness goals through training routines and nutritional advice. BFL has become a significant part of Belfort's post-fighting career, and it allows him to share his knowledge with a broader audience, not just fighters. In addition to fitness, Belfort has also shown an interest in technology and sports-related startups. He has invested in tech ventures that intersect with the sports and fitness industries seeing the potential for growth in areas like fitness tech, esports, and virtual training. With the rise of digital fitness platforms and virtual coaching, Belfort's investments align with the evolving landscape of the fitness industry. When you think of the fighters who have had the biggest impact on the sport of MMA, Vitor Belfort's name is right up there. He was one of the original pioneers of modern MMA, and his aggressive style, devastating knockouts, 
an ability to fight across multiple weight classes set him apart from his peers. At the end of the day, Vitor Belfort's legacy is more than just about wins and losses. It's about the lasting impact he has had on the sport of MMA and the inspiration he continues to provide to fighters and fans alike. The Phenom may no longer be fighting for UFC titles, but his story is far from over.